Hello. In this video, we'll code up the three node bar finite element that we derived in the previous video. And as a starting point, I'm going to take the code that I developed for the two node bar element. And we're going to modify it so that we can compare the accuracy of the two elements as well as, as, well as the computational efficiency. Just as a reminder, running this code does the following. It simulates, it runs a model with one, two, three, all the way up to ten elements and determines the natural frequency, the fundamental frequency, which is the lowest natural frequency of vibration, and compares it to the exact frequency of the known solution. Um, and this chart plots the error for each number of elements, uh, the error in the predicted natural frequency versus the exact natural frequency. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this code just a little bit um, to allow to accommodate the two different elements. First of all, I'm going to call this bar 2. Um, this function will now be bar 2. And I need to change it. Where did I call it? Down here. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit more information, including the computational time. So we've got to import the time library and then come down here. In fact, let me just put a comment in here saying two node bar elements. And in fact, let me just print that to the screen. So when we're running it, we can see two node bar element. And we want to start the clock over here. We'll just call it start is equal to time dot start. Excuse me, time dot clock. And then we want to calculate the time taken. I'll do it just here as we exit this bar two routine. I'll call it time taken is equal to the time right now, which is time dot clock minus start. That's easy enough. And now when I print out the results in this line over here, I'm just going to expand it a little bit so that it includes some additional data. And one of the other things I want to add is what is the size of the system? And by that I mean what are the dimensions of the global mass or stiffness matrix? And for that I'm going to use the NumPy method called shape. Let me write it and it'll become obvious in a second. Um, so we want to add a tab here. And we'll call this error, not error, but shape rather. And then we're also going to add the time. And I've got to add it here. So this would just be k dot shape, comma, and let me round the time. So we'll do round uh, time taken. And we're going to round it, or we need to multiply that by 1,000 first, just to get from milliseconds to seconds. And we'll round it to three decimal places. And that should be it. Let me run it and make sure I haven't broken anything. And sure enough, we have the same as before with the addition now of this information. So in each case, I can see what is the size of the global matrix. With one element, it's a one by one. With two, it's a two by two. With three, it's a three by three, etc. And then the computational time taken for each. This looks like a bit of an anomaly here that for, for a one by one should have taken a little bit longer, but um, I'm going to ignore that for now. In fact, let me run it again and see if it clears that. Not something going on there with the first calculation. Anyway, no big deal. So to continue, what I'm going to do is just collapse that. And I'm going to copy this, whoops, and paste it. And let's paste it here. We're going to call this bar 3 instead of bar 2. And now we need to make a couple of modifications. First of all, we need to change the element stiffness and mass matrix. Let me just clean this up a little bit first. Of course, it's now a 3 by 3 instead of a 2 by 2. So, we put three rows in here, and 
three rows in here. Oops, messed that up. I think I left out a bracket. And now this is just straight from the previous video. Four, two, minus one, two, sixteen, two, minus one, two, four. And this is divided by 30.0 times num of elements. And by the way, Python is such that I don't need to convert all these integers to floats. The fact that one of these numbers is a float, it will understand to convert everything to a float. That makes it kind of easy. All right, and as far as the element stiffness matrix goes, this is 7 minus 8, 1. Uh, this is minus 8, 16, minus 8. And this is 1, oops, 1 minus 8 and 7. We've got to divide this by 3.0 and now multiply by number elements. No magic here. This is just straight off the previous video. Now, we also showed in the previous video that the size of the global mass and stiffness matrices, instead of it being num elements plus 1, should be 2 times this. So in each case, we've got to multi multiply the number of elements by 2. All right, and again in this line here. This line is where we take the element stiffness and mass matrices and we expand them to the global size. So again, the global dimensions need to be put in here. Okay. Now the next line becomes a little bit trickier, not much, but let's just leave a bit of space to make it readable. Remembering this is now a 3x3 three three matrix, as is this one. So immediately it can't be plus 2, it must be plus 3. But before we even get there, I'm going to define something I'll call the first node. And the first node is simply 2 times i. Remember that i is the element number which starts off at zero, because it's zero indexing in Python. And the, the nodes are also zero indexed, so the first node would be node zero. And maybe just take a little bit of time to convince yourself, and, and, and maybe it's easier just to write it out. Write out the number of each element from zero to num elements minus one, and write out the nodes. And you should see that in each case, for each element, the left-hand node is just two times whatever the element number is. Why? Because once you do the overlapping, there are actually two elements. That's the third element that overlaps. But enough of that. It should become obvious in a second. Uh, this is all the same, except for we now need to replace first node to first node plus three. Again, we're copying a three by three matrix. First node, first node plus one, and first node plus two is where that goes. Python is such that it does not include the last number in this range. And I'm just going to copy and paste this in all these other places. So it would be the same there, since it's a square matrix, and then exactly the same thing for your global stiffness matrix. The remainder of this is identical. We don't need to touch it at all. Uh, so we're done with this method. Now, before we plot the results, we want to run everything for the three node elements. Um, before I do this, I'm going to call this error two. And the reason for the two is it references the two noded element. Error two is for the two noded element. I'm going to copy this entire piece of code and I'm going to paste it down here and I'm going to modify it for the three node element. How do we do that? Let's put a 3 in here, put a 3 in here. Then the only other thing is when we call the method, we're calling bar 3 instead of bar 2. And then finally, the error will be, we'll call error 3. We'll just neaten this a little bit. And I believe we're done, except for plotting the results. We need to make a slight modification here to include both errors. So we take out this and we replace it with zip error. 2, comma, error, whoops, 3. And that should be it if I haven't broken anything. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Looks good. Let me blow this up a little bit for you and explain what we're looking at. And let me expand this a little bit. All right, so on the chart, in blue it shows 
the two-noted element and in green the three-noted element. And you can see just how much more accurate or how much less error there is in the three-noted element. I mean, there is very, very little error even with two elements. If we have a look at the actual numbers here, what you'll see is, let me just move this out the way, the exact frequency is 1.571. In the two noted, in the three noted element with as few as two elements, we actually get there. In fact, let me just change the decimal places here to four. And the exact frequency to four. And I'm doing this just to give a little more insight into just how accurate it is. So we're rounding to four decimal places instead of three. Let me run this again. Take that away. And you can see the exact frequency is 1.5708. And even with 10 elements, we get close, 1.5724. Oops, there's one place here that I didn't round. Let me do it there. Okay, look how accurate the three noted element is. The exact frequency to four decimal places, 1.5708. We get there with four elements. By the way, four elements produces an 8 by 8 matrix. The time is just about a third of a second, or 0.3, I should say, three-tenths of a second. Okay? If we look and compare that to 10 elements for the two-noted element, we find that it's not as accurate, it's bigger, and it takes longer to run. So there you have it, and you can see it graphically quite clearly if I move this back onto the screen. Clearly an improvement. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you found something useful in it. Uh, if you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We'll allow other people to get to see it more easily. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next